Hi and welcome to the first ever recording for a new YouTube channel and also a website called Nerd of Gamers. Today we're going to be looking at a game called 10 Minute Space Strategy. This game was released by a group called the the Goblin Lunatics, a small group out of Hungary. And as far as I can tell, this is the first product they've ever released. Uh, the current version which I'm playing with is 1.02. Uh, they've just recently released uh, last month uh, version 1.03, but I haven't updated to that. But uh, let's just take a look at the game as it is. So as you can see, we've got a, uh, the usual choice of options. We're going to be starting a new game. Now, over on the right hand side we can see the different options for the map size. You can go from anywhere small, from an 8x8 world, all the way up to a 32x32. You have different choices for how dense you want planets to be within the area. So here we're going to be finding planets just like 20% of the time, all the way up to planets nearly all over the place. However, generally you're going to be looking about 45% to play a reasonable game. Now, we're going to start off with a small 10x10 map. It's fairly quick, you can get through a good game in about 10 minutes, is exactly what it says. The game can start to drag on a lot more as you start going towards the larger sizes. It can take a couple of hours. Now, we're going to play a simple one-on-one -on -one match, us versus a randomized computer player. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go in and configure my particular alien species. As you can see, you're presented immediately with a large choice of information. You get some little description about your your uh, credo type and what special abilities that you can get with it. You got uh, various traits, which are down here, which show the points. This allows you to help customize your race a little bit better. Now, the race doesn't actually make any difference. You can choose any race you want, any home world type. And you can choose any credo. Now it's the credo that actually makes the difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in this example, we're going to take Amazon race, desert, but we're going to go through and we're going to pick the jack of all trades. Now this is handy because we start off with two colony ships, plus one ship movement, which is very useful, and especially on this small map it will give us a much larger area, which we can... See, and also 50% extra building speed, so that means things like our fighters and us bombers are going to be built a lot quicker in this. Now, also, as Jack of All Trades, you also get the maximum 10 trait points. Now, this is going to be useful for the particular setup that we're going to take. Now, I'm not going to go through all the particular traits, but we're just going to go through and explain the ones that I'm going to pick. Now, one of the ones we've got here, Monster Hunters. It means around planets which you need to colonize, you can often find alien spaceships which are already there. This makes it a lot easier to destroy the alien spaceships, but also at the same time, you get points towards your research, which so not only do you clear an area for you to settle, but you also get more advanced for it. There is an alternative one which is... Which one is it? Experimental Weapons. This is much the same as Monster Hunters, but this one happens when you fight opponents' fighters. So we take that one as well. Now there's a very useful little thing called Star Control. It's only a single point, but there's various special, uh, special zones around the area which shift and change depending on what turn it is, which can provide boosts to research, um, production, and also population. Now this is a very handy one because it reduces the amount of fighters that you need in order to take control and gain these bonuses. And at a single point it becomes well worth our, our time to invest in it. Now one of the ones I'm going to take here for this example is Blitz. It allows you to start off with an additional 50 fighters. Now one of the things is in a small game this this particular boost becomes hideously broken unless your opponent takes 
the Blitz as well, you're pretty much guaranteed to just bulldozer over everything that they do because their pro fight production just can never keep up with the amount of fighters that you ever have floating around. And also, you, with, combined with Star Control, Monster Hunters and Experimental Weapons, it allows you to gain a massive research boost at the start and also just dominate the entire area. But seeing that we want to get the game over quickly, we're going to take this as well. And finally, we're going to spend our last two points on rapid colonizing. This allows us to start off with an extra colony ship, so this will give us a total of three col ships. So, there we go, we've now made our selection. Uh, one of the things is we can go change our name. We're going to call ourselves Knock. Let's try spelling that correctly. Nod. Nerd of gamers. So there we go. We're all set up. We've got our opponent, apparently called Terran. And there we go. Right, let's go start. So first thing that we can see is we're sitting around our planet. Um, Platus, or Platus. Population 3. It shows two different symbols. We have one for fighters, one for colony ships. It looks like we've got 50 fighters as per, as per the Blitz and four colony ships and we can see in our area three different planets. Now each of these planets is surrounded by the aliens and here's one of the special areas that I mentioned earlier. It's a large asteroid field. Now if we were to get control of this we could boost our production speeds for fighters up to 50% per turn. Now it will only last 15, 14 turns. Now it does say it requires 50 fighters but however because of our special ability we will only need 25 fighters to take control of that. Now before we do anything else we come down here to uh, here. We can see our building slots. Uh, this is this is shows you what you can build on the planet, how many slots, and what they do. Also, just over here, you can see a special ability for each planet. Every single planet has a special ability, and this particular one is called loyalty. Now, this is handy because in this game, there's a limited number of planets that you control based on your empire rating, which is just over here. Now. By having a loyalty tech we can control one more planet. So what we're going to do is going to start off and tell it to build a bomber factory because at the moment we have no ability to produce bombers and these are very useful in the later stages of the game because it allows you to destroy the enemy's, uh, the enemy's population. Without that you're not going to be able to do it all in the game. So it's a very important to make sure you have one. Now normally you have can control three planets at uh, Empire Tech 1, but because of loyalty you can now see that it's increased to four. We also have a number of space stations that we can have under our control, fighters, and also various little bonuses that we have. And here we can get a little overview of the Empire's production, our particular trades, bonuses, a little brief overview of our particular race selection again, but also we got a specialized traits here. Now these are randomly signed each games. Now as you can see here we have something called Anti-Gravity Cities 1. Now you might start off with Anti-Gravity Cities 3, 2, 1, but it doesn't matter, it's just randomly assigned. Now if we were to get up to Environmental Tech 2 and Industry 2, we'd be able to have an additional plus one maximum population for all our planets. Now having a high population on the planet is very helpful because it helps increase your production speed. So this is definitely something worth applying for, but just from experience, I'm looking down here, Gravity Whip 2. Now this is very useful. If you're at the start of the turn, if you're surrounding a friendly planet, you can have an additional or movement. And given the size of this small map, that's going to mean that we're going to be able to travel pretty much anywhere we want within this game. So we're going to make a heavy push towards Propulsion 5. So we make sure that our research is on 5, uh, on Propulsion, which it is. Now, as you can see, we've got a choice of three planets, and we know that our opponent must be around somewhere around here. So we're going to make a push. We're going to try and set up the settlement here and here so we can send fighters over this um, settlement over this way and also settlers down this way so we're going to start off with our closest one now if you click on 
the fleet you are able to divide it so we'll do that we'd leave the colonizers behind and but we want to keep them all in one group so we've selected the group we now right click and right click again and we enter the fight and as you can see now as you can see we won that fight fairly easily only losing three fighters 